This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. We've had a bunch of requests to do a Precision T7610 gaming build. Um, so um, here it is. Um, we've, we've got a system with some decent base specs. Um, and this is, this is the build that we're doing. Um, it's uh, Precision T7610 you know, stock chassis. It already had two quad cores, Xeon E5-2643, uh, 3.33 gigahertz processors, which were kind of on the lower end, but they're gonna be fast enough for what we're trying to do here. Um, there's 16 gig of RAM in the system, DDR3, 1600 megahertz, uh, 256 gig SSD OS drive. Um, and that was all from the factory. A um, Couple key upgrades that we're going to do to make it work really well for gaming is we're adding a Western Digital Black 512 gig NVMe.2 SSD drive with a StarTech adapter. And we are also adding an EVGA NVIDIA GTX 1080 SE with eight gig graphics card. And this system's awesome because it has a 1300 watt power supply. So if we did want to go with uh, 1080 Ti, I mean, we could do that. We could go SLI if we wanted to, if we want to get crazy. But uh, this system we were able to build for under $1,000. So. Um, that's fantastic when it comes to an awesome gaming build, you know, that hits, as we'll see later in the video, you know, about 100 FPS on high with certain build or certain games. So, okay, so here's our chassis. As we said, our procs and our memory already installed. We also have the uh, 256 gig SSD already installed for our OS boot device. We are going to install this NVMe drive with this adapter um, because the system does not have an NVMe slot on board. So, um, there's the adapter, there's the model number, there's SSD, uh, or sorry, the NVMe that's already installed. Here's our GTX 1080, nice card. Uh, you can buy these under 500 bucks right now. So one thing to note is that the NVMe, uh, it cannot be used as a bootable device on this system. So um, just note that, that's why we have to use our 256 gig SATA SSD as a boot device, but we can put all of our games on the NVMe drive. We'll go into that further later in the video. So. Here's the inside of the chassis. Um, we are going to install that 1080 right here. So we'll open up these two slots. And because we have two processors installed, we opened up the top IO slot. So we're gonna put the NVMe um, SSD up in the top slot. So let's install our GTX 1080 graphics card. We've already opened up those two slots. We'll line it up. Let's get a different angle here. This card's kind of heavy, so be very gentle. Basically line it up in the slot look at your PCI blank clips and line it up and so we'll take a look at the PCI bank clips here looks good there and then just let it drop right into the slot okay so that's in there lock your retention clips in the T7610 has an amazing amount of power so um, it's already got an 8-pin cable ready to go we don't need any adapters for this system so plug that right in and it, the chassis is big enough for this particular card where you can shut it without having any issues. So here's our NVMe card. We already showed it installed, but so we just want to show you that it's an NVMe SSD and then we have to use this adapter. So we're going to show you how to install the NVMe drive into the adapter. And it's, it's really simple. Um, there are a bunch of different adapters that you can get for this particular card, but we chose this, this particular StarTech version. There's some newer ones that are a little bit easier to install. Um, it pops in just like a memory module. Slide it in and it still sits up. So you do have to use this little screw to lock it in place. And it's tough to do that with one hand. So we're gonna, we're gonna just skip to the next part of it because gotta hold the camera at the same time. So, yep, it goes right there. All right, that's what it looks like when it's installed. And now we just have to install it. So open up your side panel again. And like I said, we have two processors installed, so we have the top I.O. slots available. If you only have one proc installed, you're going to have to install it below um, the graphics card or above it if you have nothing installed there because you cannot use the top I.O. slots unless you have CPU2 installed. And it says it right up there. All right, so open up your uh, retention clip, pull out that old PCI blank, and do the same thing you did with the graphics card. Just basically line it up. 
And this card's way lighter, so it slides right in. Make sure that PCI slot is locked in, and like so. And go ahead and click it into place. Now, we're gonna, like I said, we're booting to the, we're booting to the 256 gig SSD. So you have to, um, the reason why we're putting that NVMe drive in there is because uh, we're gonna put all of our games or any large programs on there, anything that is really large and we want it to open up faster. Um, that's what we're going to uh, use that NVMe drive for. So here's a look at the back of the chassis with those two cards installed. So NVMe on the top, graphics card. Um, you can look at that power supply. It's a nice looking chassis. Okay, so let's do a benchmark quick. This is a game called Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, we have uh, it on high settings. We did turn V-Sync off because that'll pretty much cap us at 60 FPS. But this is an awesome game to do benchmarks on because it is pretty intensive on CPU as well as GPU. So this game will give us a pretty good idea of where we stand. So I'm not showing the whole benchmark test because it brings you through like this big map. So we're just skipping to the end here and we're just gonna check out the results and see what happens. So this is just the end of it, like I said, and we'll see average F FPS, GPU usage, CPU usage, and we're hoping for 100 FPS or better, or something close. So uh, we'll pause it here. Average FPS, 97.7, so pretty close um, to 100. Um, typical FPS, 98.5. Average CPU, 74%. Average GPU, 95%. I can tell you that I've run this benchmark before with the same graphics card with a system that had a little bit faster processors installed, and we did average over 100 FPS. So. This particular configuration, although it's getting an awesome amount of FPS, if you did pony up and buy like some E5 2637 V2s, a um, little bit faster uh, CPUs, um, I believe you can get that over 100 FPS, although 97.7 is pretty, pretty close. Um, speaking of that, let's go take a look at uh, greenpcgamers.com because if you do need uh, for, you know you want to go with faster processors and you need other upgrade ideas this is a great place uh, to get free ideas and free content uh, go to the blog type in t7610 click on the blog listing you'll see a whole bunch of awesome upgrade ideas and again this is free content um, here are the faster CPUs that I was telling you about that will help you get 100 FPS or higher um, and obviously you can change your settings. You don't have to put it on high settings, but um, we have done other builds with these E52687W procs. They're eight core CPUs, max turbo frequency is four gigahertz. Those will definitely get you over 100 FPS with the 1080 installed. So um, other upgrade ideas are here. It's a, you know, this is great. It's awesome content. Um, but so that's, that's pretty much the, um, the build that we did. Um, it was, you know, it did really well for a system. Like I said, we built this for under a thousand dollars. Again, we we end up with extra parts and stuff um, that we use for these builds that when we do these how-to videos. So you should absolutely, if you've not already, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because we do giveaways with our extra parts. Um, also, follow us on or sorry, subscribe on YouTube. Um, we could really use your support. And if you have live hardware questions, definitely check out uh, my Twitch page, JBigTicket23. Um, you can see when I go live and ask uh, live hardware questions. Uh, thank you so much for watching.